But today, William Barr came into his second tour of duty as a Republican attorney general with a relatively solid reputation in the legal community, especially the Republican legal community in Washington, D.C. The image packagers of William Barr were telling the world that they would now see a more scholarly approach to the work of the attorney general than we saw under one of the worst and least qualified attorneys general in history, Jeff Sessions. But as of tonight, William Barr is seeming at least as Trumpian as Jeff Sessions, if not more so. And the reviews from, the, from legal scholars are condemning. The distinguished Harvard Law School professor Lawrence Tribe tweeted today, Barr has no shame. He's become a caricature of a lawyer and a miserable excuse for a public servant, a pathetic porcine puppet for a puerile president. Professor Tribe tweeted that after the attorney general, with absolutely no justification, used the word spying in today's hearing. Spying is not a legal term. It's a Hollywood term. It's a word for screenwriters, not attorneys general. It's a word for wise guy know-it-alls having a beer with their friends and not being especially precise about their language. And in this case, it's a word that the attorney general threw into the Trump propaganda machine where Fox and Friends will now be saying forever that the attorney general says that the federal government was spying on the Trump campaign. When the attorney general was pressed on the use of that word, he admitted that he had absolutely no evidence at all to support that statement, none whatsoever, none. And that is why Professor Tribe said that Barr has no shame. That, among other things, is why Professor Tribe says that the Attorney General has become a caricature of a lawyer. Once again today, the Attorney General refused to say if anyone in the White House has seen the Mueller report. Who, if anyone outside the Justice Department has seen portions or all of the special counsel's report? Has anyone in the White House seen any of the report? You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, as, as I say, I'm landing the plane right now. And, uh, you know, I've been willing to discuss my, my, uh, my letters and the process going forward. But uh, the report's going to be out next week, and I'm just not going to get into the details of the process until the plane's on the ground. More than once today, the Attorney General said that he would be delivering the Mueller report to Congress next week. The Attorney General knows that Congress will be in recess next week, and so that might mute Congress's immediate response to the report. And once again today, one of the most revealing comments the Attorney General made had nothing to do with the Mueller report and everything to do with William Barr sounding like the most Trumpian Republican member of Congress. Yesterday, the Attorney General's most shocking moment, his most non-legal comment, came when he was asked about his leadership of a change of legal position by the Justice Department so that the Attorney General Barr is now using all of the force and might of the Justice Department to try to destroy the Affordable Care Act in a lawsuit. Now, we're going to take a look at some of that exchange yesterday one more time because it shows the attorney general giving a non-legal response to the question, a purely political response, a response that has nothing to do with the litigation that he was asked about that he is now leading against the Affordable Care Act. If you're successful in this lawsuit that you're supporting and the entire Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act is struck down, Millions of Americans who currently receive health insurance coverage under the law are at risk of losing that coverage. Am I correct in that? I think the president has made clear uh, that he favors not only pre-existing conditions, but would like uh, action on a broad uh, health plan. So he is proposing a substitute for Obamacare. So that is an utterly disgraceful answer by an attorney general. The answer to the congressman's question was one word, yes. If William Barr is successful in destroying the Affordable Care Act in court, millions of Americans will lose health insurance coverage. That is an undeniable fact and an undeniable legal outcome of the case if William Barr is successful. Not only did William Barr refuse to answer that question, the words that he put in the, in the place where the real answer would go are worse than childish. He tried to suggest to adults in Congress that President Trump would immediately get a replacement for Obamacare passed through the Congress. When? That day, the same day that William Barr wins in court? 
No one will lose health insurance because Donald Trump will rush through Congress in one afternoon, a replacement for Obamacare that will take effect the same day. That was an offensive Trumpian answer that the attorney general gave. And today, it was about the wall. The attorney general of the United States once again became a Trump cheerleader in a congressional hearing. And this time, it was about building the wall. We have to stop the flow of drugs from Mexico or, or make a much uh, bigger dent in it. That's one of the reasons that I do think uh, that uh, a wall, a barrier system across the southern border is an important part of that. Every expert on the subject reports that most of the illegal drugs that come into this country from Mexico come through the legal ports of entry. They are smuggled through in trucks and other vehicles coming through the legal ports of entry. But the question wasn't even about that. The question was about the opioid crisis in America. That's what the attorney general was asked about. That's why he wants a wall. His answer was build a wall, build the wall for opioids. Opioids are made in America. They are legally sold in America. And the opioids that are imported into this country come in as regular legal shipments of freight through our legal ports of entry. And those opioids kill people. And this attorney general's answer to a Republican senator from Arkansas who expressed concern about what opioid, opioids are doing to his constituents in Arkansas is build the wall. William Barr knows there is never going to be a wall. And William Barr should know that a wall would do nothing about the opioid crisis in America. And what William Barr's answer means today is that William Barr doesn't care about the opioid crisis, or at least he couldn't find any words to express his real concern about the opioid crisis. Instead, it was build the wall. William Barr has no idea what to do about the opioid crisis, if you judge by his testimony today. He's not one bit smarter than Donald Trump about the opioid crisis. He wasn't today. Once again today, the Attorney General indicated that after he delivers a, his version of the Mueller report that he considers suitable for release to the public, he will continue to confer with the Chairman of the House and Senate Judiciary Committees to see if there is any way to release to the committees more information from the Mueller report that the committees might want. Republican Lindsey Graham, the Chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, seems barely interested in seeing the redacted version of the Mueller report and will ask for nothing more. But the Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler, has already been granted subpoena power by the committee to subpoena the full unredacted Mueller report and said today that the Attorney General still needs to release the full Mueller report. We have just the experts we need to consider the Attorney General's testimony today. Neil Katyal was Acting Solicitor General of the United States in the Obama administration. He also served in the Justice Department in the Clinton administration. And as many of you know by now, Neil Katyal actually wrote the Justice Department rules governing the Mueller report. Emily Bazelon has been writing about the Supreme Court and the Justice Department most of her career and is now with the New York Times Magazine. Her new book is Charged, the new movement to transform American prosecution and end mass incarceration. And for the political dynamics of what we witness today and what is to come when William Barr's edition of the Mueller report is released, we have John Heilman, national affairs analyst for NBC News and MSNBC. He's co-host and executive producer of Showtime's The Circus. And Neil, let me go straight to you with your review view of the Attorney General's testimony today? Well, I think the one success he had is that he made Matt Whitaker look pretty good <laughs> by comparison. I mean, I, I have the privilege of teaching at Georgetown, and one of the things you have to do before you enter the law school is you have to take an LSAT with analogies. And I think the analogy after today is the presidency is to Trump as the attorney generalship is to bar. That is, we have, as you just said, a Trumpian attorney general. And I never thought I'd say those words about Barr, but um, we're really at that point, unfortunately, now. And I'd isolate three things, all of which you've kind of hit on. Number one, his views on the Mueller report and really the hiding of it from the American people. He's willing to redact here and there. He's not even willing to go and seek a court order to lift grand jury material. Uh, number two, 
He and his gutting of the Affordable Care Act. This is a real, real problem. The Justice Department always takes the view that if there's a reasonable argument to defend a statute, you do so. You don't kind of waltz into court and attack the statute and try and gut it. That's what he's done here. And he completely switched today the standard for defense because he said, well, as long as there's some plausible argument to abandon defense, that's enough. And that has never been the standard. And we're seeing the fruits of this even this afternoon because now it's not just the Affordable Care Act. He sent a letter, the Justice Department, to Congress late this afternoon saying, now I'm not going to defend a statute that prevents female genital mutilation. He's calling that unconstitutional. So I have no idea what's next after this. And then, you know, there, there's number three, the tin, he's joined the tinfoil hat group with this whole thing about spying and the FBI in 2016 being against Trump and the like. I mean, there's an ongoing investigation about that. As far as I think everyone knows, this investigation is going nowhere. And he even admitted that later on. So this is a really, this isn't acting like the Attorney General of the United States. This is acting as Nancy Pelosi said tonight, like the Attorney General of Donald Trump. Emily, uh, we just heard Neil Katyal say he never expected himself to be saying that uh, Attorney General William Barr is acting in a Trumpian way. Did you ever expect to hear Neil Katyal say that Attorney General Barr was acting in a Trumpian way? And let me just, I just want to, and, and Neil remembers this, when Neil and I first talked about uh, the Attorney General's first letter uh, about the the Mueller report, uh, we, we did it with some hope. We did it as optimistically, we greeted it as optimistically as we could. We gave it an optimistic reading. Uh, We've been struggling to find any optimism since then. You know, if you go back further in William Barr's history, when he was um, in the George H.W. Bush administration, he pushed for a very broad theory of executive power, um, including granting pardons to more people under Iran-Contra. And so I think that this faith that Barr, maybe because he was associated with H.W., was going to be the sort of moderate force, it's proved to me misguided. And I think if you go back and you look at his previous writings, including the memo he wrote last summer, um, they just look like they're setting up more of the kind of rhetoric you see today than the kind of longed for figure, the grown up figure that people imagined. Uh, let's listen to what Adam Schiff said about this today. It was deeply disturbing to see the attorney general make such a cavalier suggestion that there was spying on the Trump campaign. Uh, that may be pleasing to the president, who has been pushing this idea of a deep state coup. But it was a deep disservice to the men and women of the FBI and the intelligence community. It was yet another indication that the attorney general feels that it's his job to do the president's bidding. Uh, that's not his job. We are certainly going to want to get to the bottom of what he was referring to, what he is talking about, uh, whether there's anything more to this than simply speaking words the president wanted to hear. John Hauptman, uh, it seems every time the attorney general speaks or now writes something, he gives something to the Fox propaganda machine, the right. Trump propaganda machine that they will use. Yeah, well, I think, look, um, it's easy and often correct to mock congressional hearings um, for uh, their futility, their uselessness, their posturing, their superficiality. These two days with Barr have been incredibly edifying and clarifying for everyone who's paying attention. If you're a Democrat in Congress, it is now clear despite all of the questions that were around Barr that we've alluded to here, that a lot of legal scholars, some even on the left, who have said he's an institutionalist, can be fine. What we've discovered in the last two days is there's no lack of, there's no ambiguity any longer. He's a political hack. And that clarifies the battle lines, I think, in a useful way for Democrats going forward. The, the, an ambiguous attorney general who seems to be like he's trying to play the traditional role of attorney general, attorney general, trying to be true to the institution, trying to be true to the rule of law as opposed to serving a strictly political function, that's a complicated guy to deal with. It's much simpler once the veil uh, has been lifted and once the scales have fallen from people's eyes and they say, okay, here's what we're dealing with, an explicitly political attorney general who is, as Neil suggested, I don't know if he's worse or better than Matt Whitaker, but he's the same as Matt Whitaker in that he was a purely political instrument. And I think that will set the terms, if Democrats are now clear about that, they, that, that leads them to certain kinds of tactical and strategic choices that they make going forward, knowing that I think is helpful in that regard. Uh, Neil, uh, the Attorney General said today, said once again today, that he's just using the rules that you wrote for him. 
Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely not. He's totally distorting those rules to try and serve his ends of trying to hide information from the American people. I mean, he said that the rules require Mueller's report to be confidential. That's only when Mueller gives the report to the attorney general. It says nothing about when the attorney general gives the report to Congress or the American people. And then these, indeed, a part of the regulations provide for a mechanism for public release of this information. And I think John is right to say, you know, the politics of this are clarifying. But I, I guess, Lawrence, to me, the big issue isn't politics. It's something about the soul of the country, the soul of the Justice Department. I mean, I, when I worked there in two different administrations, attorneys general did stuff that was against their political instincts. I remember almost throwing up when we had to defend the don't ask, don't tell policy, for example. But we did it because we felt it was our duty. The Constitution requires the president to faithfully execute the laws, uh, not to gut them. And this attorney general is just wantonly gutting laws like the Affordable Care Act and the Female Genital Mutilation Act. And that is really, you know, the most antithetical thing to the rule of law imaginable. The attorney general is trying to tear down law instead of trying to protect it. Let's listen to what Nancy Pelosi said today. Let me just say how very, very dismaying and disappointing that the chief law enforcement officer of our country is going off the rails yesterday and today. He is the, the attorney general of the United States of America, not the attorney general of Donald Trump. Emily, that, that's what I thought uh, that William Barr would want to avoid. That, that he would do, and, and you don't have to do that much to avoid that kind of comment. You just have to speak much more carefully. He could even hold to the positions that he's currently holding to if he would speak more carefully, more precisely, more legally, uh, and not throw around uh, build the wall and spying and, uh, and then pretend that when he, if he successfully strikes down Obamacare in the courts, pretend that no one will lose health insurance. I mean, these are, these are wild things for attorney general to say. So I have a couple questions. One is, what is the longer play here in terms of the FBI, in terms of law enforcement officials? When you ca throw around terms like spying, which the Justice Department had previously said was not the case, what does that do to the people who are doing this work and trying to do it conscientiously? And you're supposed to be the leader of that agency. Um, what position does that leave you in vis-a-vis -vis all these Folks, you know, we're used to thinking of Republicans as the people who are more reflexive about defending the work of law enforcement and investigations. And now we're all switching sides in this conversation. I wonder what the implications and consequences are for Barr in the longer term. Uh, John Heilman, who made the strongest contribution to the Trump campaign today, Donald Trump or William Barr? Oh boy, good question. I mean, I, I, I think, that I'm not sure that, that in the end, and I've, we've talked about this on the show before, if we think that this is a foolish strategy, that he's not playing, even if you take the position of what, what would be the best way to play this game, mm -hmm. uh, to, to fight this battle from their point of view, if you think that it was foolish for him to do what he's done all along, these are all short-sighted, misguided, not just in terms of his long-term standing in the Justice Department, but for winning this particular fight over the Mueller report, then all of this is not making any kind of a contribution to Trump. He's trying to make a contribution to the Trump campaign. I'm just not sure that he's doing it very effectively. And I will say to, to what Neil said, I obviously, you can't not be disheartened by all of this. Mm -hmm. And obviously there are larger issues at stake, but what is coming is a war. This is still, this Mueller report, every day the stakes of it actually are rising now, rather than having the air let out of the balloon as people thought for a brief moment when it first was, uh, was reported out. This is a war we're gonna be in the middle of right now, and, and I, I, I understand it's dismaying and disheartening, but if I'm fighting that battle on the Democratic side, I wanna understand my enemy and the kind of, uh, what the play is and what the kinds of mistakes they're likely to make. I think Barr has revealed an awful lot about himself, the weaknesses of, his, of himself as a political player over the course of the last two days. And in that sense, I think it's heartening for Democrats because this is a guy, I think, who can be had. We're going to have to break it there. Neil Katyal, Emily Basil, and John Heilman, thank you all for starting us off tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.